Hey everybody, how's it going? Uh, I'm Chase, welcome to another episode. This We're gonna film here, The Daily Creative. This is a show where I answer your questions. It's a call and show. You just call 802-962-4357. You leave me your question about becoming um, a professional or an aspiring creative, what your challenges are, and I answer those questions. We are a community here and we learn from one another. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to, uh, I got a, a question queued up here. Actually, we're gonna do two questions in this episode. First one is from Joanne. The second one is from Dom. Um, all right, Joanne's talking about building an online community. Hi, Chase. This is Joanne Gorunia calling Hi, from Joanne. the Philippines. I'm an illustrator and a writer, and I'm a study of objects on Instagram. Um, first off, thank you so much for the work that you do, that you and your team do. I've learned so much from you. Uh, cool. My question is on the topic of community, um, since I read your latest blog post. Uh, I am a hands-on full-time mom to okay. a six-year-old and an 18-month-old. Um, it's an 18 very difficult old. to find some time just to be by myself. Um, let alone find or build a community of like-minded people. Sure. Uh, I get things done by working late at night while everyone's asleep. Uh, my question is, uh, how can I build or join a community now while the kids are very young and I cannot interact face-to-face -face with people on a regular basis? Got it. Um, I interact with a good number of people on social media, specifically Instagram, um, and I initiate and work on collaborative projects online. Okay. Uh, but if you have other advice, if you have any other advice on how I work more on building or belonging to a community, I'm all ears. Thank you so much, Chase. Awesome. All my best. All right. Thanks, Joanne. Good question. So, oh, disclaimer is that I am not a parent. So, where I'm coming from is from observing the way that, you know, dozens if not more of my friends who are parents and or having had this question maybe 500 times, just, you know, eyeball to eyeball with people all over the world. So take this with a grain of salt, but I believe that there's real, uh, I think there's power in what is ultimately a pretty simple answer. Um, a, I also think that it's hard to see a simple answer when you're in a situation that you're in, like full-time mom, that is an amazing job. There's so much work and the fact that you have two and one so young, I get it. But let me give you a little, my, my point of view here. Um, when it sounds like you're doing a good job of getting people together uh, online, of joining communities and participating on the internet. Fantastic. Uh, but I think I want you, you, you mentioned f like physical, but you said you can't really do it because X, Y, Z. I have a slightly, uh, I'm going to ask you to do something that might make you a little bit uncomfortable, but it is, can you do both? It sounds like you're doing an okay job online, but I would like you to in some way um, I'm going to give you a little bit more prescription for the online stuff in just a second, but I want you to be a part of a physical community where you get together with people in and around your community. So if you are going to take responsibility for forming that, I believe that scheduling something where you can bring in a sitter um, on a very specific one hour, 90 minutes, what I've learned from my friends who are moms and the families that I know is that scheduling that time is actually really helpful. It's helpful, for, like in some ways the kids, there's a schedule and I heard that somewhere that kids like schedules. Um, and I also heard that it's really, really healthy for parents to get away either on date night or in this case, um, you having a date with your community. Um, if you want to control your schedule, to me, the best way to do that is to form the community yourself because you can put the, you can, you know, it's Tuesday at two o'clock because that's when um, one child is asleep and the other child is at school or something like that. So, because um, if you're not driving the community, then it's very hard to set the schedule. Um, but, you know, by extension, when you are forming the community, I think there's a couple things that are helpful. One, put yourself out there. You have to, like, for example, maybe the community is around other mothers who want to create during the day but have you know one or two small children have a family for which they are the primary caregiver like that would be an amazing community I feel like and even if the community is one or three or five people to start with um, being vulnerable saying what your challenges are getting together so that you can exchange ideas on how to be able to be more creative even in those moments when you're tired and how to fit your side hustle in after the family goes to sleep I, I think those are great topics around which to build a community so what you think might be your biggest weakness 
an inability to carve out some time might actually be a strength. It will force you to carve out some time, even if it's small, and you can build a community around the things that will help you. It's almost like a little mastermind group that at the beginning this community might be small, but who knows, maybe it turns into a blog, a, a vlog, an online community where you're taking this idea and scaling it. Ultimately, I think that, you know, I, I feel like I've encapsulated the point of view that I have around the actual physical community. Why I think that's important is I think that contact with other adults on a regular basis around your hobby and your passion is really important. So that's why I'm encouraging you to do that. That is not aiming to replace the community that you have online. I think there can be plenty of overlap if some of these uh, folks that are in your physical community can be a part of your digital, great. But it sounds like you're cultivating some digital community, which is awesome. My, my question is, are you cultivating that around your passions as an artist, as a photographer, or are you cultivating it around um, motherhood and you know maybe I'm, I'm just making the assumption that things might be different because you said you get your work done after everybody goes to sleep so if this is work like how are you cultivating it are you DMing people it sounds like Instagram is one of the ways um, I just find I find that you have to put in energy to these things they don't happen organically and just like I was prescribing that you carve time out physically are you able to carve time out for the digital, the online community? Because without that really intentional time, and again, it's, it can be after the kids go to sleep or whatever, it's not gonna flourish in the way that you're gonna be able to get the most out of it. So, um, and my last comment is you do get out of it what you put into it. You can definitely uh, stalk and lurk and all that stuff online, but I think the more you're participating and the more one participates in an online community, the more you get out of it. So again, I don't prescribe to be a parent. I've coached a lot of parents and I've observed a lot, so I think that you know, hopefully that's helpful. But what I love about your question is that you know that community matters. This is part of the other 50% that I always talk about. It's not just pick, pick, like creating work and putting it out there, but it's participating in the community such that when you do put things out there, you have a place to get feedback, you have a place to draw inspiration, you have a place to um, meet other people because it's people that make the world go round, not stuff. All right. That was Joanne. Thank you, Joanne. I got one more question here from, let's see, er, sorry, one more question here from Dom. Dom wants to know if he should take a gig outside his core. Yo, what up, Chase? It's Dom. Hey, Dom. Vintage Dom P on Instagram. Um, yeah, so basically, I'm a photographer in LA. I recently got contacted for a DP job. Um, I loved it. I did the job, actually, and now they want me to do more jobs. But I'm not sure if I really want to do it because of the overtime I'll be spending out of town, the money on the gear that I would have to spend. Um, but it's so lucrative and it's kind of fun and I get to record like, you know, American history. Um, what, sh what should I do? Should I go down my, should I stay on my fashion photography path or should I go off on this kind of director tangent or whatnot? Um, yeah. Thanks, bro. Peace. Sweet. Dom. Great question. Thank you. I love this question specifically because it is around the idea of focus. Now, you, I, I could hear a little bit in, in Dom's question, in his voice, that he actually likes this. And when I listen to his, but, but I have to travel and but I, spend, I have to spend more money on gear. And then he said, but it's really lucrative. So I, I sense some conflict in there. And conflict is okay, um, but here's the thing, is before you get any of that detail, it's do you want to do this? Does it distract from your core of being a photographer? And I don't think it does, because I think in the future that we're in, whether it's still images or moving images, I think those things are definitely emerging. I mean, this camera right here shoots stills and video, and it does that for a reason. They are definitely different things. No questions about it. And being a still photography and being a director of photography, for those of you who don't know, that's what DP means. Um, you're, you're operating the camera, but it's for moving pictures. Um, those are different things, but just because of technology, because of we're all having to be hyphens now, I think those things are merging. At the core of that question is, do you like it enough to do it? And if that, that doing it provides inspiration, variety, more opportunities because maybe when you get hired to do, this is what ultimately happened with me except it was the reverse. I used to be the photographer and then I would get hired to, to, to direct and occasionally DP but more often direct the commercials for big brands that I was shooting. So 
I was able to put those two things together. I, I loved it. Um, and for me, it provided a nice little balance and made me, you know, I'm on a journey of lifelong learning, so it was really helpful for that. Here's the thing, on the flip side of the same coin, if you don't like it, you, I heard that you don't like to travel, like I have to travel, then don't do it. That's like at the core, if you feel like it's distracting from your business, then you can't do it because it will pull you away and you'll get less good at the things that you are, you're supposed to be doubling down on your strengths, tripling down on what you're good at, not trying to diversify just for the sake of diversify. So that is up to you. I can't coach you on what you, what you like and don't like, but what I can say is that my observation is that moving in still pictures are the future. This little thing right here, if this is the iPhone and this used to be, or this is the equivalent of a Swiss Army knife, this, this camera here, this used to be the toothpick. It was a kind of a nice to have. Now, this device, this camera, is the blade. It's the most important part of this device. It is the future of AR, of VR, of photos and videos. And, and, and as the camera is at the center of the ecosystem, of the future of storytelling, of communication, of, think of how 15 year olds communicate. Images, right? Photos, videos, words, bitmojis, um, emojis, all that stuff. So I think getting to be a mastering the use of storytelling, of, of capturing still and moving pictures is really important. So unless you don't love it and you feel like it's a distraction and you can Im implement it without sort of degrading your experience or your income or your opportunities as a photographer, um, again, it's up to you. You have to put your own filter on this, but from a relevance, a culturally relevant point of view, I think it's it's a win. Um, all right, good question. I appreciate that, Dom Vintage Dom P. Pretty good Instagram name. Uh, appreciate you calling in, man. And again, uh, whether or not your questions or ans are answered on this show, I hope you learn. If you learn, it means the world if you share this with your peers. Um, I um, I'm super grateful. I think we're all in this together. Rising tide floats all the boats. That's the thing that I'm trying to do with this: is take your questions, apply what I've learned over the lifetime of being a professional creator and an entrepreneur. Um, if you want your questions specifically answered on the show, it's pretty easy: one eight zero two nine six two four three five seven. Signing off. I'll probably be here again tomorrow, so come back and you're subscribed. That would be awesome.